Arrogantly and desperately, Mussolini sought a way out. He resolved to conquer Abyssinia, to establish there an Italian empire. For the first time, this man of action acted. It was a characteristic move, born out of fear, frustration, and envy of the German strength. Mussolini recognized that his position in Europe was being threatened, and he grabbed at Abyssinia as compensation. He chose the one victim against which even the Italian army, though badly equipped, could be successful. Planes and tanks created terror in this backward country. Italian aeroplanes sprayed poison gas on the Abyssinian forces. War could be once more a matter of show for self-indulgence, a further boost to Mussolini's vanity. The old master of display had his last triumph. As he played at war, the League of Nations condemned Italy as an aggressor and tried half-heartedly to deter Mussolini by imposing sanctions. Haile Selassie himself appeared at Geneva to protest against the invasion of his country. But in vain, Mussolini was not impressed and the war continued. He deluded the Italian people into believing that poor gallant Italy was surrounded by a ring of jealous powers. He persuaded the Italians to sacrifice their money, even their wedding rings, to continue to pay for the war. The Abyssinians surrendered. Mussolini had done it. He had given Italy an empire. This was his moment of greatest triumph. Europe defied, Italian arms victorious. There was a feather in Mussolini's cap. For 20 years he had talked. Now he had acted. He thought himself to be the great man of war. A swaggering Mussolini strutted on the balcony. If only history could have stopped at that moment, what a great man Mussolini would have seemed.